what's up? Good morning. We're so glad that you're here with us on KVTV yes. this morning. Yes. And I am a super fan of hey. every single one of you. And we are glad that you're here. This month, our K through fifth graders have been talking about kindness mm -hmm. all month long and how we treat people with kindness. And kindness is showing others they are valuable by how you treat them. So that might mean you encourage a friend who's having a hard day or maybe just listening to what somebody has to say if, um, and just letting them, letting them know that you care. Yeah. So, um, and with God's help, we can choose to be kind to the people that are that are put around us. Mm -hmm. So um, our memory verse for this month for K through fifth graders, be kind and tender to one another. Forgive one another just as God forgave you because of what Christ has done. Ephesians 4.32. So I hope you guys have been practicing that this month and um, really putting that into practice. Yes. And the memory verse for preschoolers is, we have it here, and we're going to do the motions with it. So yeah. do it with me. A friend loves at all times. Proverbs 17:17. 17, 17. Awesome. Yes, that's awesome. And the uh, the story for today is about a man who heard about some amazing things that Jesus was doing. So he went and asked Jesus for help. So it's going to be a great story, a great reminder that Jesus will help us because mm -hmm. he loves us. Yeah. So that's just a really great so reminder. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. That's right. And so um, all month long, we've been doing what we call a cheer videos. And so we have, we have a different one for you this week. So let's check that out. Away. To spread some cheer today. <laughs> to spread some cheer today. Kindness is the way. <laughs> to make someone happy today. Woo! Go kindness! Awesome. Yay! Yes. So we hope you guys will go out and be kind to those that are around you. And we'll see you next time. Yes. Bye. Bye. Give a little
Hey, pal, what you got there? Hey, man, look, I've got some fan mail. No kidding. Yeah, I, ne I never thought anybody would take some time to actually write a letter to me to tell me how much they like the show. And the, here, here, let's 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 read this one, all right? All right, sure. Okay, John. You got your name right. Yeah, my name is Lowry. I'm seven years old, and I wanted you to know that I think you are so funny. Aww. Yeah, I like it when you fall down. Please keep falling down. I really can't stress that enough. <laughs> Thank you for making me laugh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You do fall down a lot. Well, that's the, that's that's not the point. The point is, I got some fan mail here, and I got five. Isn't that crazy? That is totally crazy. What's that? Fan mail, baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have so many more than I do. Well, you know, I got a lot of fans. Wait, why does, why does the handwriting all look the same? I don't know, I guess that my fan base just cares about their penmanship. Okay. Dear Brandon, I'm your biggest fan. That's what they all say. I've watched every single one of your shows. They care. And please remember to give me a call sometime. You have to interact with your fans. Love, Aunt Janet. Brandon, are all these letters from your Aunt Janet? Yeah. That's a good ant. I know! You want me to get her to write you one too? Yeah! <laughs> yeah! Hello, my name is Brandon. Hello, my name is Brandon. Hello, I'm Brandon, and this is... Oh. I, uh... Uh, this is uh, the so-and-so show, and my co-host John is not here. I'm out here, buddy. Where? <sighs> out here. Don't you remember? I'm running a marathon today. Oh, yeah, right. I, I guess I didn't know it would be during the show. I don't decide when the marathons happen, Brandon. I just show up when they do. Well, still, I'm sorry I can't be there to cheer you on. Oh, uh, that's okay. Someone has to hold down the fort in the studio. But maybe there is something I can do for you. What's that? This. Hey, 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 it's Looney Larry here with another deal that's absolutely certain to work or your money back. And when I say your money back, I mean all sales are final. <sighs> to be or not to be? That is the question. You don't have to be sad that no one came to see your one-person, eight-hour production of Hamlet. Because now, with Looney Larry Enterprises, there's Rent-A-Fan! Rent-A-Fan! Now you can have someone cheer you on wherever you are or whatever you're doing. You can hire a Rent-A-Fan for football, baseball, gymnastics, horseshoes, underwater dentistry, or any of these fine events. I even hired one for this commercial. Woohoo! This commercial is going so well! Worth every penny! So place an order today at www.looneylarry.org because who needs a real fan when you've got Rent-A-Fan? Would I lie? Aw, oh, Brandon, you got me a Rent-A-Fan? How unexpected. I did, they should be getting there any second. Hello. Hi. I'm the Rent-A-Fan. My name's Fran. Fran, the fan. Total coincidence. Are you, um, Jom? J John, no, what, no, it's supposed to say John. Okay, well, we always recommend proofreading your submission before pressing send, sir. Okay, that's beside the point. What are you doing here? You're supposed to be cheering on a friend of mine who's running a marathon. You're not supposed to be here. Well, I'm sorry, sir, but this was the address that I was given. <sighs> now what am I gonna do? The marathon's gonna be starting soon, and I need John to know that I care. Brandon? This is, this is huge for him, you know? He, he's not much of a runner. He, he's like a, a baby deer on ice. He's all... 
elbows and shins. He needs my support now more than ever. Brandon. I failed as a friend. What can I do? Brandon. The starting line is just two streets down. Oh. Oh, well, that's convenient. Yeah, it's the only reason why I signed up for the race. Uh, hey, are you my Rena fan? Uh, are you John? John. John? Yes. Woohoo! <laughs> you are going to win the race! Oh, I, I just want to finish it. You're going to finish the race! Do you really think so? <laughs> Absolutely, because you're John! 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 Oh! Let's go! Okay! <laughs> that was a high five. I, well, yeah, it's just, she's a fan. <laughs> It's Bible story time with Kellen. Hey guys. Hello, Kellen. Hi, Kellen. John's running a marathon during the show today. But why? Because he's the best. <laughs> Thank you, Fred. You deserve it. Wow. Okay. What are we talking about today, Kellen? Well, we're not talking about running exactly. But we are going on a little trip. Check this out. Jesus said, suppose someone forces you to go one mile. Go two miles with them. Now, why would anyone force you to go a mile? Well, today they probably wouldn't. But back in Jesus' day, there was a law that said if a Roman soldier needed someone to help carry his pack, he could order someone to carry it for up to one mile. Jesus was saying, if someone orders you to do that, don't just carry the pack for one mile. Show kindness by carrying it for two miles. That's where we get the phrase, go the extra mile. Here's what it might look like today. Meet Becky and Bethilda. Both are good students who pay attention in class, but watch what happens when their teacher asks them to clean up their tables before they leave. Yes, ma'am. Fine, whatever. Both girls are doing exactly what their teacher asked them to do. But Becky is doing it with a good attitude, while Bethilda isn't. Becky's even cleaning up the rest of the room, not because she was asked to, but because that's what it looks like to go the extra mile. Can I be done now? <laughs> Thanks. Let's see what happens later in the day. It must be lunchtime, and it looks like a few people missed the trash can. Not my mess. Bethilda has a good point. Why should she have to clean up a mess she didn't even make? But then, when you go the extra mile... Oh, looks like someone missed. Becky knows that showing kindness can sometimes mean doing things you're not expected to do and helping people even when you don't get anything out of it. Going the extra mile is being kinder than you have to be. It's doing more than you're asked to do. And it's not so you get anything out of it. It's not so people will like you more. You go the extra mile because if you are a follower of Jesus, you want to point people to him. People can see how much Jesus loves them through the kindness that you show. So even though no one may have asked you, Here, let me help. You can still choose to go the extra mile and share God's love and kindness with others. Thanks. So what do you say, fellas? Are you ready to go that extra mile? Did you say extra mile, Kellen? Yeah, but it's just a metaphor for unexpected kindness. Oh, I'm in. Me too, Kellen. Thanks for the story. You bet. Happy running. Thanks, Kellen. How's the marathon going, John? He's flagging, but he's not giving up. That's <laughs> right. Did you do any preparation? Of course I did. I had three plates of spaghetti. 
The night before the race, it's called carbo loading. Look it up. Okay. Siri. Uh, keep the show moving, Brandon. Please just keep the show moving. Please reveal the quest. Reveal the quest. Reveal the question. Oh. Have you ever received unexpected kindness? Has someone ever gone out of their way to make your day a little better just because? Oh, my roommate cleaned out my cat's litter box yesterday. Uh, that was awesome. Can that be my answer? <laughs> sure. Talk about it together. Have you ever received unexpected kindness? Hey, John, uh, now that the show's over, I can uh, come cheer you on in person. I'm almost done now. You've only been running for like five minutes. Well, how long is a marathon? The fastest anyone has ever run one is around two hours. What? What? Oh! Ooh. Come on! Uh. We're almost to the starting line! Oh, we haven't started! No. Well, oh. <laughs> until next time, I'm Brandon. And that's John! And this has ah. been the So and So Show. We'll see you next week. Come on, jump! Let's go! Come on, jump! Okay. We're so close. Okay. Starting.